to the channel, uh, everybody. Today is Sunday, August 30th. We are now just 64 days away from the elections in November. We are closing in not only on the month of September, but also on the two-month mark. Okay, the last two months of this election are basically going to decide it. We've talked about several times now how this race between Donald Trump and Joe Biden continues to narrow up. Uh, now that both conventions are done, that the VP pick for Biden's campaign has been selected. But in this video, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, this is the year 2020, as we know, and as a user-suggested video, we are going to do what the electoral map is going to look like in 20 years, okay? Five election cycles from now, this is what I expect the political map uh, to look like uh, in the year 2000. And 40. So we're just going to get right into it. We're not going to specify exactly what the, who the candidates will be because we just have no idea. Although you can sort of think, you know, loosely about some ideas that you may have in your head. You know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for the Democrats could be an option. Of course, you know, many in the Republican Party that are currently in Congress are much older. So it's a little hard to know exactly who their candidate um, could be in 2040. Um, and of course, both parties continue to shift so much in various directions, so it's difficult to tell exactly who these candidates uh, will ultimately end up being. But we're just going to get into what these individual states could end up looking like in 20 years. So let's just go right into it. Hawaii is not going to change in 20 years. Okay, this state continues to be very, very high minority population, big Asian population, and it's pretty much held steady for the Democrats for a long, long time now, and they're very disenchanted with the Trump administration and with the Republican Party in general. Now, in Alaska, it's kind of, Alaska is so difficult to know because this is a state that can shift in one direction or the other really at any time. It is, you know, by nature, you know, just its DNA is a Republican state, okay? That's just what it is. Um, but uh, as we know, it can shift blue word, if that's a word. Uh, in that, you know, Mark Begich was able to take home a race there, things like that. So Democrats can win in this state. It's just uh, their, their, you know, their results are fairly inconsistent, and it's difficult to know exactly where this state will end up. But the thing is, Alaska is not really growing in population. And so that um, basically suggests to me um, that it's going to remain a Republican state uh, for the foreseeable future. I'm going to make a little bit of a change here. We're only going to go with two characterizations here. Okay, so I'm going to label this red. Now, in the state of Washington, um, it is interesting to note about this state that more and more people in the northern states, uh, the northern portions of the United States, are moving south down into the Sun Belt. Now, that in these northern states helps the Republicans, but in the southern states, it helps the Democrats. So you have the data backs up that um, in states where there are more people, uh, like larger and larger states, they generally favor Democrats, with the exception of Texas, which of course is not nearly as Republican a state as California is a Democratic state, and the same goes for Florida. Um, but right now, more and more people are moving to the southern portions of the United States. So could that spell trouble for the Democrats in Washington? Yes, potentially it could. Um, the problem is for the Republican Party, they have so much ground to make up in this state and not to mention some of the early data that we've seen on some of the population shifts um, is not really coming out of the state of Washington. Rather, it's coming out of the Rust Belt. It's coming out of Minnesota, states like that, kind of in this area uh, in here. Whereas this one, the West Coast still you know, remains a very, very high population area. So right now, I'm gonna remain, that's going to remain with the Democrats as far as 2040 goes. Now, in Oregon, um, if you just were on the outside looking and you saw a state that had only seven electoral votes, you'd probably say, well, that's probably going to be a Republican state. Well, it isn't uh, anymore, at least. There was a time when it was, but it isn't. And within the last 20 years, the Republicans did have a Senate um, candidate here. I apologize for this uh, noise coming down the windshield. It is raining uh, here uh, in Miami, where I am. Uh, but the reality of the situation is, in Oregon, the Democrats continue to hang tough with Portland remaining um, their big liberal bastion. And of course, the protests that have been going on and some of the you know racial unrest that we've seen combined with those protests that ended up with a lot of people being led into unmarked vans, um, as frightening a sentence um, as that may be, uh, basically cements the fact that this is going to remain 
a democratic state for many years to come, although this could narrow up. Because remember, the basically the whole eastern portion of this state, similarly to Washington, by the way, remains a Republican, or a Democrat, I'm sorry, it does remain a Republican stronghold. Now, in California, there was a moment in time when the Republicans thought they were starting to get some data that showed they were doing well out here. Um, but the reality is that it was sort of a one-off um, in the 2016 races. Um, the Republicans have done a good job in that this is a, obviously this is a thoroughly Democratic state, but that the, but the Republicans have done a good job giving themselves a very big presence in the state, mostly in that they have a number of House members um, that ge that generate a lot of notoriety and um, fame, for really for lack of a better word, between Devin Nunes and Kevin McCarthy, of course, who is the minority leader in the House of Representatives. So, and those guys aren't going anywhere for a long time. However, the Democrats have shown that, you know, they were able to flip a bunch of House districts in this state. Dana Rohrabacher, very notable Republican in the House, he lost in 2018. Steve Knight, another Republican who lost. Um, and as we've seen, the data continues to show just how blue this state remains. Kamala Harris will probably be replaced by the governor, Gavin Newsom. Maybe it'll be Eric Garcetti, the mayor of L.A., uh, it could be Maxine Waters, it could be Adam Schiff, uh, it could be Karen Bass, we just don't know. There are a lot of names to choose from out here. Katie Porter is another one. So there are a lot of names to choose from um, down here in California for the replacement for Kamala Harris. But again, in 2040, going to remain blue. Nevada. Um, I think that Nevada is a state in which more people are going to be moving here. Um, it sounds kind of silly to say, but the more the sports team influence here is going to. We have seen evidence in recent in recent decades that the more people move to areas where there are sports teams, um, that, like where there are more sports teams, there are more people. Okay, that when the Seattle Seahawks moved out of Washington, um, that moved a bunch of jobs out of the state of Washington. That moved a bunch of people that were not only worked with the Seattle, but worked around the, like, there are a lot of jobs that kind of ripple effect out of a sports team. And so now that the Las Vegas Raiders have moved there after moving from the Oakland area, um, I think that more people are going to move to Nevada. It remains a big union presence here. This is going to be in the Democratic Party's column. Okay, here's a big one. Idaho. I think in the year 2040, you ready for this one? Blue. Now, that is such a weird sight um, to see the state of Idaho lit up in blue. Reason being, we have talked about on this channel how the state of Idaho is seeing the first signs of life for the Democratic Party. Um, some of their races routinely get upwards of 38% and close to 40%. Um, and in the Bo the Boise has grown sufficiently to where it's basically the only um, uh, major urban area uh, really at all uh, in the state. And it now elects a Democratic mayor. And it did, I believe, by about 2,000 votes, voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, that, that urban area that is Boise. And so another 20 years, okay, of that city growing just a little bit, uh, little by little, is going to push this one um, further and further and further into the Democratic Party's column. This is never going to be a big blue state, you know, like the way New York is right now. But it is going to remain, um, I think it will flip eventually. The state of Utah, that's going to remain Republican, mostly because of the religious factor. Now, in this election, it is kind of worth watching what the final margin will be here. Donald Trump is not going to lose the state of Utah, but the final margin could be interesting um, because not only has Mitt Romney all but endorsed Joe Biden in that he has said he's not voting for Donald Trump and has repeatedly praised Biden, uh, but also because uh, Evan McMullen just endorsed Joe Biden, and Evan McMullen is a very beloved figure within the state of Utah. Uh, but it will remain um, within the Republicans' column because of the religious factor. Now, Arizona, this is an easy one. That's going blue. Um, Arizona is home to the largest growing county in America, that being Maricopa County, home to Phoenix. Um, right now, it's basically all but shifted entirely into the Democratic Party's column. You know, Kirsten Sinema was able to win that Senate seat in 2018, and Mark Kelly uh, is on track to defeat her again uh, for the other Senate seat. There are also now more Democrats in the House there than there are Republicans um, this time around. The Republicans still have the governorship there, but Joe Biden also remains, I think, justly the favorite to, to win this state. And again, more and more people continue to move down here. By 2020, I don't think it's out of the out of the question to say that Arizona will have 25 electoral votes. 
And so, I mean, that's more than double what it is now. Okay, so just keep that in mind because I think that Arizona it remains one of the fastest growing areas in the country, or it is the fastest growing area, that is Phoenix, and that's going to continue to help the Democratic Party. Now, in Montana, um, the Democrats continue to do a good job here in that they've retained the governorship for a long time. They consistently are very competitive in the House race here, the lone House race. But by and large, um, I, I don't really believe that the uh, state of Montana is shifting away from the Republicans. They continue to do a good job of retaining it on the presidential level, despite the fact that the Democrats um, do have a shot at actually having both Senate seats uh, from the state, which is pretty incredible. Because remember, they still have the other Senate seat, that being um, held by John Tester. And now Steve Daines, the Republicans, is up for a tough test, even though he's winning so far. Uh, against Steve Bullock. Still 64 days left, but right now Steve Steve Daines is in control of that race. State of Wyoming, I, I mean, there's, you know, there's just no evidence that there's any growing areas really in this state, and it continues to be a very, very safe uh, stronghold for the Republicans. Colorado, it's going to remain blue because, more again, more people are starting to move into this portion of the country. Denver has become a huge liberal stronghold for the Democrats. It used to be a swing state. Most of the evaluators still consider it a swing state. I don't really anymore. Okay, now Corey, and further cementing it, Cory Gardner, the Republican senator, he is going to lose. Okay, I can say that pretty confidently that John Hickenlooper, the former governor, the former presidential candidate, is going to defeat um, Cory Gardner. So that, and you know, of course, the Democrats managed to retain the governorship here when um, Hickenlooper relinquished his power, and then it was um, that seat was filled by the Democrat Jared Polis. So clearly, um, the Democrats are in a very good position here. And then in New Mexico, again, same thing. I would imagine pretty soon New Mexico is going to start to get some extra electoral votes, maybe around seven. Think of it as basically another Oregon. Okay, Oregon used to be sort of a Democratic state in the way that New Mexico is. You know, like New Mexico also, um, some people characterize it as swing state. I don't. Um, you know, Republican, the you know, Republicans had the governorship here up until 2018, just like the Republicans recently had a senator um, from Oregon, which, of course, I've now labeled a red state here. But as of now, um, New Mexico is going to remain um, with the Democrats. North Dakota going to remain with the Republicans, just as South Dakota will. OK, it, as these northern states continue to lose population and people continue to move south, that's going to be that's going to spell trouble for the Democrats up here. They're already Republican states, so the Democrats couldn't really afford to lose any voters from these states, just like Nebraska will remain a Republican state. Now, I will say this about Kansas. Okay, we have seen some tightening bolts here in Kansas, and that, of course, the Democrats did flip that governorship back in 2018 when Laura Kelly defeated Chris Kobach. Kobach then lost in the primary um, when he ran for Senate. Um, in this election cycle, he lost to the representative Roger Marshall. Okay, now, if anything, of course, that suggests, well, Roger Marshall is going to defeat Barbara Bollier, the Democratic Senate candidate, and that seat's going to remain with the Republicans. Well, yeah, sure. However, what that does show me is that the fact that Chris Kobach has lost two different times kind of cements that Kansas voters are a little bit unhappy with Donald Trump. And, you know, well, we've seen a, a large sentiment amongst Republican voters and amongst um, uh, Trump supporters, even some, that they feel the Republican Party has sort of left them, just as a lot of Democrats feel the Democratic Party has left them. Okay, that's sort of a popular sentiment you hear over the years as the demographics shift and all that. And I think more people are going to move down into the states, some more minority voters. I think in 20 years, Kansas goes blue. Now, in Oklahoma, this is just one of the reddest states out there. Okay, this just it, it doesn't really move an inch the Democrats do have that one house seat here, uh, right in the Oklahoma City area. That's a hugely competitive race um, this time around. I would expect the Republicans to flip it back. Now, Texas, I got to be in 20 years from now. The, we're not. There's not much to discuss here. Okay, that's going blue, because it's already on the verge of going blue, at least in one election cycle. And you talk about another 20 years of demographic shifts of more and more minority voters of more people moving from north to south. And Texas is going to go blue. It's just that the data just simply backs that up. So you can see already, even though we're not even halfway done with this map, that this is generally favoring the Democratic Party long term. Now, here's a different one, though. In the state of Minnesota, I think this will go red because it's already a fairly close state. Remember, Donald Trump only lost it here by one and a half points. Um, you know, it's competitive. You know, he's going to remain 
uh, very much in the thick of it here. Um, and so I would expect him, and or not him, but the Republican Party to uh, eventually flip this state. Now, it might lose some electoral votes, but that's not really the main consideration here. And I think that this will be 10 votes that they can make up, just as I've now made up 17 votes out of the uh, 44, uh, not even counting Arizona, 48 not even counting Arizona, that they've basically lost compared to the current maps. Now, in the state of Iowa, that's going to remain red because, as we've seen, the Republicans have basically taken a pretty strong hand, upper hand in this state. As we know, the Democrats do have three of the four House districts here, so that is worth mentioning. And it's possible that they could get a Senate seat because Teresa Greenfield is posing a real threat to Joni Ernst in that Senate race um, that's going to happen in November. So keep an eye on that because Joni Ernst is, is in trouble um, not enough people are paying attention to that race. Teresa Greenfield has a chance to oust her. Um, but again, north to south, keep that in mind. A very white state is Iowa. Not a lot of minority voters. You know, the Democrats will probably narrow it up this time around after they've managed to do so at least a little bit in the gubernatorial race between Fred Hubble and Kim Reynolds. But Iowa will remain with the Republicans. Missouri, I also expect this to remain red. The Democrats have sort of lost their... This used to be a state they could be competitive in. Barack Obama lost Missouri by only 4,000 votes in 2008, but it slowly has shifted further and further to the right ever since then. Claire McCaskill um, lost her re-election bid back in 2018 um, to Josh Hawley, who was a, a diehard uh, Trump supporter. Arkansas. Remember, this used to be a big Republican state. We might see this narrow up because of the population shifts, but it's so one-sided right now, that's going to go red. Now, I will say this about Louisiana. Shreveport continues to grow. It's a very fast-growing city, not as much as Phoenix, but it is growing. The Democrats, of course, as we know, do have a governor here, John Bell Edwards, very moderate Democratic governor, but he is the governor, and it wasn't that long ago that you know the Landrews were doing a good job for the Democrats in this state, representing them in the Senate. Um, so I would expect Louisiana to go blue within the next 20 years. Uh, in Mississippi, I also expect this to go blue. Very high minority population. It is not that long from now that we are going to have a majority minority population, which of course means that the minorities that we speak of will just be the majorities. And the white uh, Caucasian population of the United States will just become uh, the, the minority. Um, and that's going to spell trouble for the Republicans in Mississippi. Alabama, I think it's going to remain red for a little while longer because I think that this is a state in which you have a lot more. We've seen that there are a lot more um, African-American voters that vote Republican in this state, whereas in Mississippi, almost all African-American voters vote Democratic. Um, in Florida, this is going to remain red, I think. Now, I say remain, quote unquote, just because the last uh, several elections have gone the, the GOP's way. Uh, even though the Democrats have had a lot, plenty of success there in 2008 and 2012 uh, with Bill Nelson for all those years, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but uh, again, more people are going to move down here. But as we've seen, the Republicans have done a good job despite that. OK, there have been you know demographic shifts that have favored the Democrats for a long time in this state, and they've never been able to really put this one away except for a couple presidential election races. So that uh, I think is going to remain with the GOP. Uh, Georgia, this to me is going blue because I think what we're seeing is the high um, minority turnout, as we know, um, is continuing to help the Democratic Party. And this is a state in which the Democrats uh, mostly have themselves um, a pretty good presence already. Uh, what they lack, I think, is what they lack is representation. They just haven't really been able to put the, they really haven't been able to kind of seal the deal here. Stacey Abrams came close, but no cigar. I think in 2022, they have some firepower and that they might be able to challenge um, Brian Kemp, the governor. I'm not sure about this, but I think that the seat, the special election Senate seat might be up again in 2022, but I can't, I, I'm not totally sure about that. Um, and so Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor of Atlanta, and Abrams again could potentially run. John Ossoff again could run. So Georgia within 20 years will go blue. South Carolina also will. North to south again. Keep that in mind. High minority population in this state. It's already sh it's already getting a little close closer um, than the Republicans would like in this state. Remember James Smith and Henry McMaster. Uh, that race was 54 to 46. Okay, so the Democrats did a pretty good job in that race, uh, but that remains um, with the Democrats right now. I'm going to say Tennessee is going to go red though. 
um, because this state continues to shift further and further to the right. And I think it's going to take about six or eight years before the Democrats can start to turn this thing around. And by then, it won't be enough time to flip it back into their column by 2040. North Carolina, that's going blue, because as we already know, the Democrats have had, have had plenty of success in this state for a long time, dating back to John Edwards and Kay Hagan. Barack Obama won it in 2008. Roy Cooper, of course, you know, is a very popular Democratic governor from this state. The Democrats are expected to have some success in the House races here. Um, Cooper is expected to win re-election this time around. Cal Cunningham, uh, the Senate candidate, looks real good against Tom Tillis right now. So all that is to say that I think that this is a state that is less just kind of with the tide of a Democratic wave here. And again, high minority population, that's going to favor the Democrats. Um, Kentucky is going <clears> to <throat> remain red. Um, this is sort of the cutoff, I think, if you kind of draw a line across these states here. I wonder what interstate that is, uh, if there is one in this area. Uh, but that, that to me is sort of the line at, in which these states, um, like in terms of like people moving from north to south. Now, Virginia is a tough one um, because, as we know, it used to be a big Republican safe stronghold. Now it's kind of the opposite. Um, but suddenly it's kind of shifting back or might shift back. And then again, more people are moving away from this area of the country. But as we've seen, the Democrats have basically flipped this thing all together. They now have full control of the state legislature. OK, which they don't in a number of other Democratic states. They have both senators. That's that is not going to change anytime soon. They have the governorship. They've won it on the presidential level. So I think it's going to stay blue. West Virginia is one of the reddest states in the country. That's going to stay that way for a while. Um, now, Illinois is a tough one because, again, we could see people move out of here. But Chicago is still like we haven't seen any data to back up that Chicago um, is shrinking in any way. Um, and if it is, it could just be that, you know, people are moving away from Chicago, but within, still within Illinois. Those people are going to vote Democratic. And let's not forget either that if people move south from these areas, they might come into Missouri, and that could be in the St. Louis area. And as we know, some people kind of in the St. Louis suburbs, they, they always vote Democratic. And some of them, uh, in fact, a lot of them live in Illinois. So that is going to help the Democrats just as by the same token. I think that's a lot of people who move down into the Kansas City area. As we know, half of Kansas City is in Missouri, for goodness sake, and half of them are in Kansas. And so that's also going to help the Democratic Party's cause. So I think this is going to stay blue. Indiana is going to go red. Ohio is also going to stay red. Um, that sort of union presence that has helped the Democratic Party for a long time is beginning to die out. OK, it just is. And, you know, that already combined with the fact that we saw such a big shift from from left. Um, for, yeah, from left to right for the Republicans in 2016, pretty much cements to me that Joe Biden's not going to win it this time around. Rob Portman is not going to be defeated. I don't expect in 2022. Sherrod Brown. Yeah, he was able to win reelection. I know. But, you know, Mike DeWine also won the governorship race there. The Democrats are – instead of this being a state that they could count on on the presidential level, because as we know, Barack Obama won this both times in 08 and 2012, it, now it's kind of just like one of those states where the Democrat – it's sort of a GOP state, but the Democrats can have a big presence in it. They can be competitive on the presidential levels, and they have a senator, and they can maybe get a governorship here or there. It's also one of the most gerrymandered states in the country. Wisconsin, this is an easy call. Okay, that's going to go red. Uh, because as we know, this is more and more, every year this becomes more and more of a white state. Okay, I'm, we're curious to see the census data here because uh, Wisconsin uh, will likely continue to shift further and further to the right. Um, I, even if Joe Biden wins wins it here, remember they, the Democrats did flip the gubernatorial race here and that Tony Evers was able to defeat uh, Scott Walker. Tammy Baldwin remains a senator here. And by the way, Ron Johnson might also lose in 2022. He's vulnerable. However, I, I, I would still mostly expect uh, this to shift from, right to, um, from left to right. And Michigan, same thing. Because I think that this area of the country, the Rust Belt, is eventually going to become more friendly to the Republicans than it is now. Kind of just as friendly as it was to Donald Trump in 2016 when he just took this whole area um, in fact, this map doesn't even look that different, really, than what we saw in 2016. Of course, some of these southern states do, but the rest of it doesn't look that different. Now, in uh, D.C., that's easy, going to remain blue. Maryland, that's easy, going to remain blue. Delaware, I will say this. 
Delaware is one of those states that sort of is understated in that the Republicans do better than people think here. Okay, they can typically get over 40% of the vote here. Um, John Carney, the governor, I believe is up for re-election this time around. He will win. Okay, Chris Coons is up for re-election. He will win. Joe Biden will win Delaware. So I'm not ready to say it'll go from blue to red. Um, but I, But it is kind of interesting to keep an eye on this one because I think that the Democratic Party needs to kind of think about this state a little bit more than they would optimally like to do. They might have to start spending money there pretty soon. Now, New Jersey. Okay, this one's interesting because, as we know, the Republicans do a good job in Missouri. They have a big statewide party. Their outreach program is great there. Chris Christie was able to win election there. Donald Trump, you know, and there will maybe, well, not this time around because he's so unpopular. But, you know, I, I think a more conventional GOP candidate that isn't as, you know, whose approval ratings aren't as in the toilet and the whole thing might get over 40% here, you know, might even get around 42%. And so that that's a little nail bite. That makes the Democrats, you know, have to spend just a little bit of money here. Um, but, you know, long term, I, I think the demographics aren't really shifting from this part of the country, like kind of the tri-state area, as much as they are from this part of the country right in here. Now, Pennsylvania, that's going to go red because I think I know I said the tri-state area, but what I'm which, of course, has so many different different definitions. It depends on what you what you think it is. But um, Donald Trump and, you know, he was able to win it uh, this time around. Pat Toomey was also able to win it. So that shows one thing to me that that shows that the GOP base in the state of Pennsylvania is alive and well. OK, even though the Democrats have rebounded well, and I still consider this a left leaning state, the reality is there's going to be a big Republican presence in the state for years and years and years and years to come. And within another 20 years, the union presence dying, the industrial uh, presence of it all kind of shifting. I will keep this or, or change this into the Republicans column. New York, we haven't really seen much of a reason to doubt that this is not going to remain blue. OK, it might get I suppose it could get a little closer um, but, uh, you know, Manhattan grows every single year, nothing to really talk about. Now I'm going to, here's an interesting one, Connecticut, I'm going to say it goes red because what we've seen is a lot of wealthy insurance types tend to move up to this state. And that's why the Republicans do a lot better than people think also in this state. Um, the governorship race was extremely close here in 2018. Ned Lamont, the Democrat barely won this race. Now on the presidential level, it won't be close. However, you know, Donald Trump will probably get over 35%, which for a state that nobody even talks about is kind of respectable, is it not? You know, so I, I, I would keep an eye on that. And then Rhode Island, I'm going to keep it blue, but it's kind of similar to Connecticut. You know, the Republicans do get, you know, do better and get better margins than people think in this state. Massachusetts is going to remain blue because it's obviously such a big university state. You know, Boston is home to over 80 universities. We know how that affects voters. Vermont, uh, that's also going to remain, remain blue. I am going to say New Hampshire goes red because New Hampshire, as we know, is one of those states. It is indeed a swing state, although Joe Biden is expected to win it and Gene Shaheen is also expected to win it. Um, this time around, and the Democrats are probably going to hang on to those House districts, although Chris Sununu, the Republican, is probably going to hang on to the gubernatorial seat there. Uh, just as, as we know, the gubernatorial races there are always held to two-year terms. And then finally, in the state of Maine, I'm going to say this goes red, because I think that you know the population of this state continues to drop. I think more and more people are going to move into the Portland area, but from the northern portions of the state, Okay. And so even though I expect Susan Collins to be defeated by Sarah Gideon, uh, that to me kind of leaves this um, in large part a Republican state going forward. So there's your map for 2040. It favors the Democrats, as we know, by 90 votes. But you can see some of the changes here. Arizona goes blue. Texas goes blue. Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina. Um, you can call North Carolina flip if you want. For their GOP, they flip Oregon. Um, I mentioned in mention Kansas. They flip Oregon, they, they flip Minnesota, and Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Hang on to Ohio, hang on to Tennessee, get New Hampshire, get Maine as well. So you could see the further south the voters go, the better for the Democrats and the better for the Republicans in the north. So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please be sure to comment down in the suggestions below as this video proves. I will uh, make some user-decided videos. We're getting more and more and more of those, so it, sometimes it'll be hard to accommodate everybody, but I'll do the best I can. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and as I said, comment down in the suggestions below. So thank you guys again so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in November.